Welcome everybody to Off the Cuff. I am Adam Banks. Thank you for listening. In the studio, I have Nellie with me. Nellie, how's it going? It's pretty good, Adam. No, you're fine. <coughs> Go ahead and cough it out. Cough it out. That's what we like to do here. We like to get you freshened up for the show. Nellie, there was a reason I came into that song by Kanye West, Fade. Kanye West has flipped his noodle. Have you heard about it? He is now oh, yeah, locked up in a psychiatric ward. I think he needed to be because anybody who would cancel a tour of a sold-out tour and you just cancel all the shows and have to refund all, probably over $15 million, you have to be crazy. Well, no. I think that it's not being crazy, Adam. P- too many people judge people that have... Uh, Mental illness. Mental illness is a, is a sickness. It's a disease. I didn't like say it was. Else. I didn't say it was. But you said he had to be crazy. He and is. He, I but mean, he's not capable right now of just dealing with everyday life. If it is, re- if it really is a mental illness, then he is crazy. I mean, that might be his mental illness, craziness. You don't think there's crazy people out there, Adam? Now? Yeah, I do. But I think crazy and mental illness is two different things. I really, really do. I don't like the word crazy. Used for that. <laughs> Woo! There's some crazy people. I've met some crazy people before. I mean, I'm like, man, you need to be locked up. Well, he, they say he's not even, he don't trust anybody but Kim. His wife. And I, I don't think he's seen anybody but her. Really? And, of course, besides his doctors. Right. But they say he's really having a hard time. And we all know that he's had issues before now. But he has not been the same for sure since all that happened with Kim. With, when she got held by gunpoint and kidnapped. Well, you know, I think Kanye kind of, his behavior, we've seen w- w- bizarre behavior from Kanye West in the past. His mom died a very sudden. Tragic, tragic. And it was sudden and tragic because, you know, they grew up in the hood, mm-hmm. in the projects, and then when Kanye got rich, of course, he spoiled his and mother. Well, he should have, and I'm think that's wonderful. And so she went in for a simple cosmetic procedure. I think it was something like Botox and died under the anesthesia. No, I think she was having a facelift maybe. Well, died under something. the died under the anesthesia. Yes, it was really sad. So, I think that when that happened, that was all that was who he grew up with. Well, that's see, all he had. He at paid the time. for that and I think he blamed himself. He did. But he was doing something that she wanted to do. Right. Yeah, I mean, he I don't know. He didn't have really have any blame in it. Right. You know, we don't know the story, though. I, I think that he feels guilty for, you know, he probably might have encouraged it. Be like, Mom, go out and spoil yourself. And he probably just holds himself accountable. But you can't do that. Uh-uh. You know, and I feel bad for him for that. You know, She was excited and happy about it. At the end of the day, whether he's crazy or not, or whether he's got just depression, whatever it is, at the end of the, at the, end of the day, he is a human being. Uh-huh. He is a father. He is a husband, so, you know, I hope he gets better. He's having manic behavior. Yeah. He really is. It's manic. It, it is. It, the reason I say this is not a publicity stunt is because he canceled a tour where he had to give back over $15 million. He it was, was sold out. And I think, like I said earlier, I believe right now, life right now is just overwhelming for him. He can't deal with it every day. Right. Just everyday life, let alone anything else. Yeah, they said he was getting no sleep, uh, like no sleep. I think that if I had a career like that where I was performing in front of people, I don't think I would be able to sleep. How do you how do you go down from that? From being in front of millions of people performing, how do you go down from that at night? How do you sleep? Well, Afterwards. that's why so many of them have so many problems. You, you, you or know. drugs. Some of them use drugs. I'm not saying he is. I'm just saying different ones have different issues with it. Right. You can't. You either get it, you can deal with it on a, you know, and and know what not to do. Not You know, you got to have a brain and have be an adult, know the rights and wrongs and have morals and all that stuff. Yeah, I don't really think I would be able to sleep because... The little things that I do, like I get like a real big adrenaline rushes. Like if I do a podcast, like of a big guest. Yeah, you you're not telling me nothing. I don't. Know. I know I get really too excited. I can't sleep. He said so he, like if I was performing in front of millions of people, 
I'd oh, be well, walking. Sometimes people, he just freaks me out. He just gets a, oh, Lord, he just gets so excited. You wouldn't sleep. You don't sleep anyway. I don't sleep anyway. How do you? <laughs> Function. Function, really. I know, don't don't a lot of times. What are you I going, two, three hours? Myself. Two, three hours of sleep? I day? have, but it's just really gotten to the point. I, now, I'm trying to do better, and I have done better a few days, but it always boils right back to it, but I'm fighting it. I'm trying to fight it. De- but depression will do that to you, too. Are you a little bit depressed? I have been. But- it's the holidays. Family members that I miss. And they gone. say holidays is the number one time for suicide in the world. Holiday time. Well, I can understand it. People have money problems. Yeah. People have issues with family. Yeah, they miss their family members. Sometimes yes. they're, they're going through a divorce maybe. Or... They argue a lot more because both of them are under so much stress. There's oh. so much going on out yeah. there. Holidays, you know, I mean, it's there's good and bad. There's we, good and bad. We need to stress, too, that there's always somebody out there to help them. Call a hospital. There is a hotline. I need to to get that while we're on the air. So yeah, we can I mean, it's probably 1-800-suicide or something like that. Well, it might probably, be. Probably something. Just Google it. Just help one. They say depression. They were talking about this today at work. Depression. Because mm-hmm. they were talking about Kanye. They were, uh, One girl said, I think he's just depressed. And one woman was like, I just don't understand depression. I don't see how anybody could kill themselves. And I, and I said, you know, I've never had the thought, thank God, of ever killing myself. But I am sympathetic to people who do because that's a sickness, you know. I had it that bad, Adam. And I can tell you about kind of what it feels like. Tell us. It's like the deepest, darkest place you've ever been. And it's total blackness. And there's nobody there but you. That's exactly what another person said that was well, depressed. It's just like I tell people that about people that's been abused. You hear their story and it'll be the same as yours. But that's that's the only way I can explain it. You feel totally hopeless, helpless. You you, you mean nothing to nobody. That's what you feel. You feel not like you don't mean anything to anyone. It's just a terrible place. How do you think? Um, how do you come out of it? Sometimes you have to have help to see a psychiatrist. What was or your way of getting hospital. out? Of it? What, what helped you get out of that hole? That I had hole? I had some uh, just I had thoughts of suicide. Uh, actually, tried to commit oh, suicide. Gosh. It was pretty scary, but as soon. As I got to the hospital and everything, and it was like, I know at that time I wanted to, but I know now that I didn't want to. You know, I oh, really man. don't want to. I mean, but, but you know, it's... God the, reached in and got me, honey. Yeah. You know, yeah. He did. Mm-hmm. Because he wasn't ready for me to leave. Because I've had cancer five times. I'm still here. Try to commit suicide. I'm still here. Yeah. He's got you here. But don't think it's a people selfish either because sometimes you just feel like you just there's no there's no answer. People, people, I'm glad that you opened up. Thank you for sharing that story because I it's think hard. that shows how real It's hard, but I do want people to understand you are, and to learn and it's normal. It, I mean people have it, it shows how real you are, that you're a person and people can relate to you that way. Nelly, and you know, you can tell people, you know, you're just a inspiration because you've been there in that deep dark hole and you came out of it. I'm not saying I still but don't But you don't want to share how you came out of it? You don't want to share that part? Like, that's well, the best I part. Just, I just, I, I made up my mind that there's what, what, that's wasn't what I wanted. I wanted to be here. I want, and I'm so thankful because since then I've had a granddaughter so, that I never would have known. And uh, I have those kids that love me, and I'm try I'm imagining them, my stepdaughter and my daughter, telling them that what age I, was this? I was dead. What age was this for you? I was. And was this your first time of depression, or did you kind 52. of fifty-two? Yeah, or did you just kind of have depression throughout your life? I've had depression probably the biggest part of my life. Right. Even when I was young, and I mean really young. Well, but it also. Is it's just it's a scary thing. Yeah, and you have severe t- cases, and you got to be. I still do. You got people, you know, so many people can relate to that. 
it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't ma- matter who you know. It doesn't matter how old you are. It, it strikes anybody at any age. It doesn't discriminate. I mean, look at Robin Williams, who had the world, you know, good family, good career, good money, good name, just depressed right. and hung himself. And so many people think, yes. And so many people think that, you know, oh, just it'll all work out. But you have to pray about it. And usually, I think that's the best does, answer. Because God somehow has always found ways for me. But I'm on total disability now because of several issues I've had. But, you know, people right, like, right, like me, for instance, that you don't have enough money to make it through the month. You don't always eat what you want. Right. Uh, but you've got doctor bills that you got to pay. Yeah. And hospital bills and things like that that pe- that other they don't take into account. That, you know, if you go to the hospital, you get a bill from them, you're going to get one from somewhere else, you're like, hey. Right. Uh, you know, life goes on. I mean, but that's just one example. Yeah. Well, Nellie, there's been so much that's been happening and going on around in the world and some tragic things. The forest oh. fires in Tennessee, have Three you seen? Three people are dead. Gatlinburg is burnt up. Why would you stay if the smoke was that thick and it was going like it was? They're getting 60 mile an hour winds tonight. Yeah. Gatlinburg is burnt up. They said that there is just cabins just burnt, just, pl- just the mountains. There were people burnt. inside of a hotel oh, God, filming the fire? flames on the outside. Mm. Here's the thing about wildfire. When it spreads, it you, there's nothing you can do about it. It just keeps going, especially with the wind the way it is. Well, that hotel was filled with smoke. Those people could breathe. Oh, just get out of there. If you're anywhere close, don't don't be near that. Because fire, it will chase you. Some people were going down the road, driving, leaving the town, and the fire was right along the edge of the road. I'm telling you. On both sides of them. You should see there was embers flying over top of them and just flames shooting up beside the car. They were freaking out, and I was freaking out for them. Was it like I just got on my knees and prayed, buddy. I tell you what, it's it's very, <laughs> I'm telling you, oh it's scary. Oh, my God, it was awful. And, and that's going on. So it, is it still burning, though? Yes. Or, or is it still on fire? Yes. You're, Horribly. You need to get on. Every, the national news is talking it's still, about it. It's still smoking. It's, it's, there's nothing there's you scary, can do. There's already cabins. All the, a lot of cabins burned. There's three people my God, that has lost their lives in the that fire. was earlier. Oh, man. There's, I figured there'd be more. I could... Well, I'm thankful <gasps> there's not. Well, absolutely. But people but are I... losing their homes or businesses. Mm-hmm, or, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So far, they've been able to pretty much keep it out of right downtown, but I don't know how long it's going to last with those winds tonight. Those, tr- big, those big trees down there that are catching on fire burning are falling, causing more fires. Well, uh, so you've been watching the news more than I have. Has uh, President-elect Donald Trump said anything about this tragic situation? I haven't seen him Has at he... all say anything about He's it. He's not today. said anything? No. I know that on Twitter he released a, a statement just uh, sympathizing with the people. Yeah. But, I, I mean, I here's the thing. That. I don't know what you can do. Have you ever heard the expression, spread like wildfire? Well, Lord, yeah. That's what's going on in Tennessee. It's wildfire. It's There's nothing you can do. Well. You can try well, to put well, it out. Well, but... people's got to pray for them for one thing. You're right. And I mean, just pray. Volunteer if they can, if you can. Uh, if you're right, I mean, there's I, I, I worry about the firefighters too and their families worrying about them being there. You know, I talk uh, about yeah, absolutely. I talk about my man Donald Trump, and he has. <laughs> you haven't heard him much on that situation, but you have heard him talk about the illegal voters. The illegal voters. He is never going are to the ones who is what scares the caused him to lose the popular vote, which you know. He's getting picked on again. You know, Hillary Clinton is oh trying. Oh my God! Hillary Adam. Clinton is trying to get a recount in Wisconsin, and Donald Trump is just like you know he just jabbed back at her. Do you think that if they have a recount, that Hillary Clinton was the real winner? I don't know, Adam. I don't know. I, doubt I it. like to think that there's no fraud and illegal things going on out there, but he has. He's just very uncouth. He has no class mm. when it comes to speaking. He's going to be a very different type of president. And he's That's going to be very untraditional. 
non-traditional. And it's just going to be a different experience for the next four years for sure. I mean, he – I don't know if he'll be an eight-year president. He – don't put it past him. I'll be, I'll be surprised if he don't get impeached. Don't put it past him to be there eight years. He – when he sets his mind to something, he gets it done. Yeah, that's and, in business, but it's not running the country. Well, who knows? I mean, listen, don't – aren't you a little bit curious – to to no. see, listen, hear me out. Are you a little bit curious to see what a man who said, I'm going to run a successful business, and he made billions of dollars out of it, also is the man who said, I'm going to be the president, ran and won. Aren't you a little bit curious to see if he's going to say, I'm going to make the country great, if he can make it greater? I, at all? Are you curious at all? I tell you more than anything, I am absolutely scared to death. Scared. I'm so that's the adjective death. you're going to use, is scared. Yeah, but I, really, I truly am. For one reason and one reason only. His mouth. I don't know. He's so rude to everyone it's, at some one time or another. And there's going to be people that he can't do that to. Mm -hmm. Well... We'll see. We'll see. There's there's yet to be anything happen yet. I mean, they're still in the transition of Donald Trump. The news has been talking about that all the time. It's it's interesting that it takes about two or three months to get all the transition of power because you really have to prepare for it. That's your prep. You know, he's basically transitioning into becoming the president. Because I don't think he ever really thought about all that either because it's over 4,000 people he's got to hire. Think about this. Like January 20th, my birthday, by the way, January 20th, Obama leaves, yeah. and Donald Trump is he moves in. He's officially the yeah, president. Yeah, that ain't the first time that's happened. No, it's happened several times, <laughs> forty five times, as a matter of fact. But yeah, he's he's the man. He's whatever. Okay, so I want to talk about the football game, the University of Kentucky football team. Got to hand it to Mark Stoops. He did everything that I thought he couldn't do. He beat Louisville. He beat another contender in the SEC. He beat uh, Mississippi State. He beat uh, a record of over six games in a season. He's won seven games. And he's made it to a decent bowl. Now, we have yet to know at this point when the bowl is, or I would tell you. But regardless, Mark Stoops has had a successful season. He has beaten teams that I didn't think he could beat. He beat Louisville, a ranked team. Now, the Louisville, the Louisville win is big for a bunch of reasons. One, it's our state rival. Two, he beat a big-name coach in Bobby Petrino. Uh, three, he beat a ranked team. And four, he beat a team that is like, okay, that is a notable win. That is a win that matters. That is a win that is not just, ah, uh, we won. So, congratulations to Mark Stoops. He deserves... All the credit in the world for this season. He did a very, very good job making adjustments from the beginning of the season. The way the season played out at the very beginning, when we lost to Southern Miss and Kentucky was 0-1 and one at the start of the season, I really thought that was it for Mark Stoops because it was his fourth year. It was his year to do something. And then he went in, lost to Florida by a lot – it just wasn't looking good for him. It looked like that he was driving the nail in his coffin. And what made it so bad this season is that he didn't have successful previous years. You know, he lost the last game of the season last year to Louisville, and that game really stung to people because it was uh, a win that we could be bowl eligible for. We had lost several games, you know, prior to that. So, you know, Mark Stoops really turned it around. He needed this season more than ever. We as fans needed this season more than ever. The program needed this season more than ever. Now, it's a shame that Mark Stoops couldn't do this in year two, year three, but he did it in year four. And I think that what this has done for Stoops is it's not made his contract extension look that silly. It's still a silly that we signed him to a, to a year to a, uh, a contract extension for over $20 million. Yes, that's still a little ridiculous. But what this did, it made us be 
okay with him coming back next year for a fifth season. Now, here's the thing. He messes up next year. People are going to be right back on him, and he's done. I think Stoops has one more year to really show the fans that, hey, I'm a good coach. Hey, I'm the right man for this job. Hey, I can get Kentucky to where it needs to be. I think he is. And But he's got to do a good job this season or next season. He's got to do a good job. He can't just win five games. Those days are over for Mark Stoops. He had three seasons of just pure piss poor football. So he's got to he can't afford any more bad seasons. He can't afford a bad sixth season. He can't afford a bad seventh season. But Mark Stoops, I gotta give him all the credit in the world for him. Congratulations. Now I have been an avid hater on Mark Stoops from the beginning. And I had every right to be. He did. But you know, he he had a five year plan. If you listen to the show we posted a year ago, uh, at the end of the postseason for Kentucky, I said that I'd like to see the five-year plan. You know, maybe in year four he's really picking it up. So we'll see. I've got confidence going into next season. I do think Mark Stoops is going to have a successful season next year because whatever he did, those adjustments that he did, is working. And we have an outstanding team. You know, beside the fact that Stoops made adjustments in his coaching staff, he hired Eddie Gran as the offensive court uh, offensive coordinator which i think is a fabulous choice he you know he came from cincinnati and you know he made his adjustments special teams is doing great austin mcginnis got to give that kid all the credit in the world he won he showed up when it mattered on two big games mississippi state and the university of louisville game I got to give credit to UK safety Mike Edwards, which is probably the best safety we've had at UK in a long, long time. Somebody was saying that AJ Stamps the other day was a great safety, and in his own right, but nothing like Mike Edwards, the the sophomore redshirt sophomore out of Cincinnati. He made these interceptions during the Austin P game, turned the game completely around. He made the interception during the Louisville game, turned the game completely around. He's a game changer. When he made those interceptions, the game the game changed. So you got to give credit for Mike Edwards. You got to also give credit to Stephen Johnson, which, in my opinion, after that Louisville game, he became a legend in Kentucky. He think about his story. He is a backup quarterback, and wasn't even supposed to be the starting quarterback for Kentucky. He is the backup quarterback. Came to Kentucky. Uh, game three or four, it was. I think his first game was Alabama. Obviously lost against Alabama because Alabama is Alabama, the one of the greatest football teams. Well, they are the greatest football team in college football. But when he came to Kentucky, I mean, it was a game changer. When he was the starting quarterback, he was the game changer as well. And he has a winning record as the quarterback. So without question... People ask, who's going to be the quarterback next year, Steven Johnson or Drew Barker? It's got to be Steven Johnson, don't it? I mean, that's like Andrew Harrison last year for our basketball team or two years ago when he took Kentucky to a Final Four. You know, Tyler Eulis, a highly sought-after point guard and was an outstanding point guard. People were saying, oh, is he going to be the starting point guard or is Tyler Eulis going to be the starting point guard? Well, You cannot bench the player that went to the SEC, or I'm sorry, to the NCAA tournament and to the Final Four. You can't bench that player. you got to start him as your point guard, just like the quarterback. You cannot bench the quarterback who beat a ranked top 15 team and took you to a good bowl and got seven wins for us. You cannot bench that player. He is the quarterback. So next year, our our starting quarterback, will be Steven Johnson. I'm sorry, Drew Barker. You're not the quarterback. Talk about a kid who let his time pass him by is Drew Barker. I mean, he has been nothing but controversy since he got here. He got here and started a brawl in Richmond with a with the Richmond football team players. And then not only that, he took an air gun on campus and started shooting off. He's not a leader. He's not a role model. And, you know, he got hurt this season – Totally not his fault. 
But Steven Johnson, to make matters worse for the kid, Drew Barker, he got the starting quarterback position and has become a folk hero in this state. So Steven Johnson is definitely going to be your quarterback for now. Hey, Steven Johnson, he's... He's... he's the excuse me he's the shit you have to give him credit oh he, i love you. oh listen they he his story is amazing have i not told you from the beginning yeah that i loved him yeah. i said that boy yeah. is good he's gonna be somebody he outplayed the heisman i was so the, the number one just, quarterback they say he's a first round draft pick and stephen johnson comes he's a transfer went to a little junior college was a backup quarterback yeah, I want y'all to be telling him now that I done said that he was the shit. Yeah, and and wouldn't and and <laughs> Eddie Graham brought him here. Yeah, I don't. And Drew Barker got hurt. Everybody needs to Stephen be kissing that man in. too <laughs> for bringing him. Yeah, Stephen Johnson comes in and beats Louisville. And when he took over as quarterback, we started winning. If you remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely it's kind crazy. Of a, and, you know, hey, interesting. They got and a, he gets better they, every time. Every time, and they say, and they say, <laughs> people rely on him. People, oh people, my people, god! Listen, all these fans, they were always talking about. Oh, I hate him, and you know, I was one of. Them, I was always like, man, I can't stand him. He's terrible. He fumbles all the time. But the, there was a game. It was Austin P. They didn't start him. They started another quarterback. Right. Remember? And, and took everybody it out. got pissed well, right he before the game. His leg. Everybody was mad. Everybody was like, "I don't like this." Bring Stephen Johnson. And then when Stephen Johnson came in, he changed things. And then he came in against Louisville, and he became a legend that night. He's. I think he's amazing. Yeah. And Adam, you know, I said it from the beginning, <laughs> and I was so right. I said he, he can fly. Them little legs just yes. run down that field. Yeah, the, he's got chicken legs. I don't care he, what he's got, he, they go. Yeah, they and go. they're strong because it takes something to take him down. Yeah, it does. If he wants it to. Yeah, and he, he's oh, he's awesome. They asked him, or they asked. I mean, people are asking who's going to be the quarterback next year, Drew, Drew Barker or Stephen Johnson. That's easy. It's got to be Stephen Johnson. Oh, my God. The NFL is going to want him so bad. I don't think he'll go to the NFL. I, I mean, the NFL, probably not. Quarterback is a very hard position, and there's a lot better quarterback. Stephen Johnson, Stephen Johnson's just he's just been playing great. I mean, he, he did a great thing. What if he continues to do that? Why are he's you got, saying he's He's got to get a lot better. He does a lot of stupid stuff. He throws a lot of fumbles. I, I mean, think he's a he's a freshman. No, he's old. He's older because he's a transfer from a junior college. Oh, he's I thought older. he was a freshman. He's about forty six. Well, Nelly, no, I'm kidding. He's like nineteen, and he's like 21, 22, something like that. Was he a senior? Lord, yeah. I, no, he's a junior. I think he'll be a red shirt senior. So he's like twenty. Two twenty three, maybe. I gotta give credit to Benny Snell. That kid right there is a NFL player if I've ever seen one. I like how Benny Snell can just run the ball and he just powers through people. He just powers through the defensive line. It's amazing. Benny Snell, a true freshman. That kid's going to the NFL in three years if he keeps it up. And God forbid an injury. Boom Williams, another Wonderful running back. Kentucky's got two of the best running backs in college football. Benny Snell and Boone Williams. So all those players, all, every single one of them, excellent. Excellent. Jordan Jones, Adrian, Adrian Middleton. Those guys. Come on now. What a defensive team we have. And then our offense is just... Really turned it around. So I'm very excited about Kentucky football. And I had to go on a rant about Kentucky football because this has been the best season that we've had in a long, long time. Look that up when we go. But ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I want to thank you for listening to the show. Nelly, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you, Ed. It's always a pleasure to see you. And I just want to say really quick, we lost a member of the family, Duke, our dog. So if you see a... Boxer who's got a beautiful coat of brown and white. In the Burnside area. Running around, yes. Oh, Give us a listen, call or write us on Facebook. It's my granddaughter. She's yeah. four years old. Yeah. She's crying her heart out. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you in the next episode. Hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up. I'm I love I want I'm trying to feel it. I'm a rock the boat. Work the middle till it hurts.